Welcome back, students. Uh, you're going to try the second part of the timer app challenge. You're going to build the second part. We're going to add a couple of things. We're going to add a clock component. Uh, we're going to add a start clock button. And we're going to have a timer label that should count down to zero. So let's head back to App Inventor. We had a couple things uh, from the first part, which were a label which showed uh, the time. We had a button that allowed us to add time. Now we're going to add a new button. Uh, and this is going to be our start clock button. So we're going to put it here. We're going to change the text to start clock. And we're going to change the name of our button to the start clock. And then we're going to add a clock component, which is going to be a big part. And the clock component is under, let's see here, where is the clock? It is under sensors, I believe. Aha, found you. Alrighty, let's get to some coding. So this is what we had going into part two. We've got to do some things here. So the first thing is we're going to have to get uh, the clock to start. And the clock is going to help us count down. And we're going to use the when clock timer button is clicked. But we have to make a slight change because we don't want the clock to start when the program starts. We want it to clock, start when the button, uh, the start clock button is pressed. So over here in components under clock, we're going to go to uh, timer enabled and we're going to click off of that. And what that means is when the program starts, the clock will not start, however. So we want uh, a couple things actually. We're going to need our start clock button. We're going to pull that out instead. And when the clock start button is clicked, that's when we want our clock to start. So then we're going to set we're going to set our clock timer enabled to true. So when the clock start button is clicked, the clock itself should start. Now the next thing is when the clock actually starts, we want a couple of things to happen. One is we want to set the counter uh, that you guys are already familiar with. It's our counter variable. We want to set it to start subtracting. So we're going to set our counter variable. Every time the clock fires, which is about every second, we want the counter variable to actually decrease in value. So before we were clicking the, the counter button, the increase button and every time it was going up. And now we want to make sure that every time the clock fires, which is every second, that it loses a value of one. So let's get that set up. And every time the clock fires, the variable is going to go down. We have to set the label text to reflect what the what it actually says. So we'll actually, uh, or rather how much time is left. So we'll set the counter label text. Every time the clock fires, it should go down. It should be equal to whatever the new value of this variable is. And then the last thing we want to add is that whenever, when we get to zero, we don't want to start going into negative numbers. If the clock counter is, uh, the, the value of the variable is equal to zero, we want to turn our clock off so it stops going down. So we're going to need a conditional, otherwise known as an if then. So we want to skip the setup here. If the value of the clock timer is zero. then we want the clock timer enable set to false. Alrighty, good luck.